I would like to welcome you all to the Be Beauty Coalition on Climate panel this afternoon. My name is Birna Aral, and I will be moderating this afternoon session. Our panelists collectively represent a group of trailblazer brands in the baby skin and hair care categories. They are here today to announce the formation of the, of the B Corp Beauty Coalition. Their mission is to focus the collective efforts of their companies on improving the sustainability standards of the beauty industry. They are inviting this audience to join their efforts and become one of the builders of this movement to change the beauty industry for the better. Before we dive into the conversation on how this group is uh, shaping the discussion on what sustainability means for the beauty industry, I would like to do a little introduction of the Good Housekeeping Institute where I work and how it fits into the green space and also give you my perspective on where green beauty is today. After my introduction, our panelists, David, Noelia, Catherine and Darcy will get a chance to introduce themselves and their own brands. We will then hear from Marie Charlotte on the charter of the B Corp Beauty Coalition and learn how you can be part of this very important initiative. As I mentioned, I would like to briefly talk about my organization first. The Good Housekeeping Institute is the testing arm of the Good Housekeeping Magazine, which is one of the most prominent purse titles. When we're not working from home, we are at our testing facility in the LEED Platinum Certified Hearst Tower near Columbus Square in Manhattan. In addition to conducting blinded consumer testing, our chemists, engineers, and our scientists evaluate thousands of products each year in our labs. Our rigorous expert analysis is key to the unrivaled trust consumers have in the Good Housekeeping brand and the Good Housekeeping seal. The most recognized com consumer emblem in the US for over 110 years. In 2009, we introduced our green emblem the Green Good Housekeeping Seal to demystify eco claims and provide thought leadership in the sustainability of consumer products. Today, we reach over 50 million people each month across our print, digital, and social channels. So every year, we take the pulse of our audience by surveying our consumer panel of 75,000 members regarding their attitudes towards shopping and living green. We conducted our survey again last fall, just around the time of our Raise the Green Bar Green Summit. While we were pretty much at the height of the pandemic, we saw the consumers' interest in leading a green lifestyle was going strong. 40% of the respondents described themselves as green shoppers. An additional 30% said they considered themselves occasional green shoppers. On top of their green shopping list are, in very close succession, baby and prenatal products, household cleaning and laundry products, beauty and personal products, personal care products. These three categories were far, far more important to the consumers compared to the 10 or so others that were on that list. So this is all good news for everyone on this panel. In fact, valued at around 5 billion globally in 2020, Natural and beauty is about one percent of is only about one percent of the entire beauty industry, but it's the fastest growing segment. According to our sur survey, the top reasons why consumers seek products is that they believe these products are better for the environment and are better for their own and their family's health. And I'm not, and I'm sure we would all agree that yes. These, would be the, these should be the real reasons why the natural, organic, green beauty category is the fastest growing segment in the industry. However, consumers are not without hesitation when it comes to this category. 19% 19 think that these products are much pricier than conventional ones. 13% say they cannot decide which ones are really green, and I'm underlining this for this group, uh, for this conversation. Another 10% say that they don't perform as well as the conventional ones. So any brand that wants to reach this green consumer needs to achieve this with high performing, lower cost products, and most importantly for this group, to communicate to the consumer how and why their products are green. 
From where I stand, in the past decade, green beauty product market was driven by ingredient safety, especially in the US market. Now we might argue why that is, whether FDA's oversight, which has not been updated in over 80 years, has any to, anything to do with it, etc. But I feel that's a discussion topic for another day and another time. This ingredient-centered approach, in my opinion, has led to the proliferation of different marketing buzz buzzwords, such as clean, non-toxic, chemical-free, cruelty-free, vegan, etc. Now, we all know that there are no unified definitions of these terms in our industry. As a matter of fact, in the magazine world, we have spent quite an effort to explain what these terms may or may not mean and how to figure if such claims are legitimate or not. On the retailer side, it has led to the creation of a plethora of no-no lists. Now, I'm sure most of us will also agree that these no-no ingredients aren't always blacklisted because of abundant scientific evidence against them. Nevertheless, we also saw ingredient safety specific certifications such as those by EWG and MateSafe emerge as means of uh, helping consumers make greener choices. In fact, you're also probably familiar with that with what we refer as selfie seals, which are generated by the brands themselves and are made to look like third party certifications. This group knows very well that replacing one ingredient for another one doesn't make it necessarily green, meaning it's not automatically be better either for the health of the individual using it or the environment it ends up in, as unfortunately some consumers were made to believe in. In the past couple of years though, all these marketing buzzwords like natural, organic, clean, non-toxic, etc., seem to have been replaced by one rather loaded term, sustainable beauty. This trend has actually penetrated other consumer product categories such as textiles, home care products, and many more as well. So to really tease out what products and companies have made strides in their sustainability journeys, we launched our, our annual Sustainable Innovation Awards three years ago. A jury of internal and external judges with the submissions based on our sustainability criteria and data companies are willing to share with us. From ingredient sourcing to carbon emissions and water use during manufacturing to labor that goes into a product to making and to its end of life, we all know here that there are many aspects to consider to be able to call a product sustainable. As good housekeeping, our mission has always been to empower consumers with knowledge they need to make the right product choices for themselves and their families. And being able to make recommendations for truly sustainable products is a top priority for our brand. Therefore, it's my absolute honor to be guiding this roundtable discussion among these pioneering brands who are collectively defining, defining what sustainability really means for the beauty industry. So they can focus and combine their efforts to make products that are better for our planet's health and therefore also better for our consumers' health. At this point, I'm going to pass the microphone to each panelist to introduce themselves and the brand they're representing. So uh, I, I believe we have some presentations uh, that we're gonna also show. Tony, uh, who's kindly helping us with the uh, presentation uh, slides. And we're gonna start with David from um, Davinas. Hi, everybody. It's uh, great to be here and uh, share a little bit of uh, our journey uh, towards sustainability that we started uh, um, almost, uh, almost 20 years ago. In, uh, in 2005, we, uh, we started to focus very much in, uh, in sustainable beauty. And um, it, was, it, it has been quite a journey. Um, here, in a very, very quick overview of the group, Mm, based in Italy, um, first time because certification in uh, 2006. Uh, then uh, we uh, we recertified in 2009, and now we are also a benefit corporation. The B Corp score is 117. This is probably the number that is uh, the most uh, interesting one in uh, in this uh, overview. We know that uh, in B Corp, what is great is uh, the culture of, uh, of measuring of measuring everything. Um, the second slide, uh, please, second slide. 
yes the second slide is our our purpose our scope uh, it took us uh, it took us many years many uh, fine tuning uh, to to build uh, this uh, purpose as a company as you can see here you have a uh, three very uh, key um, words that are our um, guiding um, reference the uh, beauty ethics and sustainability uh, so that is uh, um, you know how uh, these uh, three words together are creating are creating uh, the culture of the company and uh, and it's uh, it's good to um, to leave uh, this reward uh, on on a daily on a daily basis. Uh, the the last uh, the last slide. This one is uh, uh, what we call our um, sustainability ecosystem, uh, and uh, each one of these planets uh, they uh, walk they they. They travel around uh, uh, the, uh, the sun. That is uh, uh, what we what we call regenerative sustainability. How do you how do you become sustainable today? But through regenerative practices. And here, uh, in each one of these planets, uh, we have a lot of projects that we are building as uh, that we are building in, in as a community, as a company in the headquarters. But, may, but uh, you know, as a, as a community at uh, at large, uh, of course, uh, you know, when it comes to the beauty industry, you know, that's where we belong to. Packaging and uh, raw material, so uh, is uh, are the two most uh, specific uh, areas of impact. So we have a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of projects there. But then, uh, as you can see, uh, we have also a project that are. It's a more holistic, more transversal in, in, in a very classic B Corp approach, in a very classic stakeholder approach. So we have initiative on decarbonization that go from local initiatives to global initiatives. So local initiatives, uh, of course, decarbonization is uh, our, our uh, journey as a company, uh, uh, our journey to uh, neutrality. Um, we have already uh, announced our path, and uh, and uh, of course it's about measuring uh, uh, the 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 speed of it. But also we have also initiative on on uh, at, at large in our city, uh, on our on our country, uh, Italy, for example. We participate at Race to Zero uh, uh, Italy, or we 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 are work building also a carbon neutrality campaign for our city that is uh this is parma italy so uh global initiative local initiative always on on this uh on this area of the carbonization on sustainable supply chain also uh, lots of lots of projects there uh we're going to make we will we'll make an announcement uh in the next few days that uh, probably will help the whole uh beauty industry this is our aim to uh advance on, on uh, building a supply chain that is uh, more regenerative. That is also a, a project that goes beyond the, uh, the, the, uh, the borders of, of, our, of our company. Um, okay, then some initiatives uh, on, on, uh, on people, on uh, on happiness and diversity and inclusion, we are we are sponsoring the World Happiness Report. We are sponsoring. Uh, we are supporting. Uh, um, we are supporting a way to recalculate the, uh, the general output of uh, the the the, econ the economy, and to make it uh, more uh, to make the economy as a, as a part of ecology and not and not the other way around. Usually, we launch it at the United Nations on uh, March twenty first. The, the day of happiness you know that uh, the world is a bit, is a measure on gdp but uh, some countries well there is one at the moment that is bhutan is building is uh, measuring on a different way with different parameters so it's 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 a matter of measurement it's a matter of measure what matters so that is a uh, that is very important so that uh, we are advocating different measurement systems uh, also for the the overall economic system uh, well, diversity and inclusion. This is the 
that's very uh, much in fashion at the moment. I think that uh, in some parts of the world is, is, uh, uh, is very extreme. Uh, in this case, it means that there was a need of uh, some adjustment. I think that uh, a new normal will come soon on these, uh, on these initiatives. Um, okay, because advocacy, Marie Charlotte, my colleague, will, uh, will share a beauty alliance uh, that we have uh, uh, facilitated that is a uh, co opetition that is, uh, uh, you know, the way because think, uh, we think together. We think you want to run together to a new, to a new ecosystem. The corridor is small, but uh, after the corridor, um, we see, uh, we, we, we see a, a new square. Mm, that is, um, I don't know, this is uh, in 15 years of activities, I think we, we made a lot of progresses. I think it's a journey. We, we, know, we know how tough the journey is. Many times we change ideas, many times we, uh, we thought that uh, it was good to go in this direction. And then we, we realized that, uh, <laughs> that it was not exactly the right direction. It, it's like uh, peeling an onion. You have so many skin, so many layers. You take out a, a layer on, on the onion, and, uh, and then it's a, a different world that opens up all the time, all the time. So the more you go in depth and the more, uh, and, the, and the more maybe you realize that you have to turn 180 degrees uh, on, uh, on what you are doing. Uh, yeah. It's exciting, mm. it's, uh, it, it's exciting. It's, uh, it's a thrilling journey, I would say, when you want to do it properly. And, uh, and, and I think it's, it's, it's never ending. We, are, we, are, we need uh, some disrupt, uh, disruptive innovation. What? One Thank more. You, I, thought, I thought maybe you were done, but I was gonna, uh, um, you know, add a few thoughts after uh, listening to your presentation. By the way, I love your cartoons. I mean, they're out of this world, and they really, I think, show how how you you went about uh, your journey and starting from decarbonization. And one word that stuck with me when you said in the beginning, measuring everything, right? So that's where you started and. Uh, you know, leading, uh, leading your community and now leading, you know, being one of the leaders in this beauty industry globally. That's, that's truly amazing. Um, so I believe we're, um, just to be uh, mindful of the time, I think we're going to move on to uh, Noelia uh, from Natura and Company. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. David, sorry to cut you, but it's true that when we start to talk about sustainability, we could talk for ages, I understand. <laughs> oh, I was done. Thank you so much. So, sorry, I took too much So, time. yeah, sorry. so I am really thrilled to be with you today, and thank you for having me. I'm the head of Group Affairs for Natura & Co., which is a Brazilian personal tech group uh, comprised of four iconic brands, the first one being Natura, the mother company, obviously, founded in 67, then joined by The Body Shop in 2017, Aesop in 2018, and Avon in 2020. We are, I think, very, very proud to be actually the world's largest B Corp at this stage. So I think this is a major achievement that we really, really want to highlight here and, and, and recognize. Um, each of, of our brands has a very different journey, I would say, towards uh, sustainability. Natura, as such, has been uh, as a long-standing commitment to protect the environment, the Amazon, and has been carbon neutral since 2007 already. Avon is the company for women and champions empowerment, the fight against breast cancer and domestic violence. The Body Shop is, is really a pioneer of corporate activism. And I would say that ESOP has been at the forefront of circularity. So a, a big history uh, on that front. Uh, I would say that the, the various efforts of the four companies in the group have been pulled under a single commitment that we have unveiled last year in June. We call it uh, the commitment to life. And that's a sustainability vision for uh, 2030 that you see on, on the slide that Tony's presenting. We have set very ambitious targets on three main pillars. The first one actually being a pillar uh, based on climate uh, that is addri addressing the climate crisis and protecting the Amazon. Uh, we're committing to three main commitments to reduce obviously the greenhouse gases emissions and potentially become net zero as soon as possible, but uh, max by 2030. Uh, then protect the Amazon and work towards zero deforestation. 
And finally, uh, work on science-based targets for biodiversity and enforcing the Nagoya Protocol. On the second pillar, which is uh, mostly based on human rights and me being humankind, as we say, we're working on supporting our associates on gender equity, on uh, inclusion and diversity, of course. We also work uh, on supporting our what, what we call our wider network, the six, six to eight million mostly women working for us as consultants. And we want to actually provide measured increases in earnings, education and health for them. And finally, we're working towards building a very comprehensive and strong human rights policy to uh, fight any woman, woman, uh, human rights infringement in, in the supply chain and uh, with our, uh, our vendors. And the final pillar is the third pillar on circularity and regeneration. And this one is really focused on embracing the full circularity on packaging, um, having at least 95% of renewable or natural ingredients and same for formulations. And finally, overall, increasing our investments and collaborations on regenerative solutions. Out of the three pillars, we have a total of 31 types, which is massive, but we really want to be very bold on those. I will go a bit deeper on quickly on the ones on climate, on pillar one. The first one being obviously reducing greenhouse gas emissions and becoming net zero. So we've been already working for 20 years also on that commitment with Natura as a forefront. Uh, but we also uh, now really uh, putting a, a strong emphasis on, on obviously reducing the RD emissions currently, aligning on science-based targets, obviously using renewable energy, addressing the yes. energy efficiency yes. issues. Yes. Uh, finding also uh, lower carbon yes, logistics exactly. solutions and uh, also working on, on packaging and ingredients. Sorry, there's oh. someone that is not oh. muted. Oh. I think. Oh. Uh, then we, I can say that we, for that, we are part of the Science Based Targets Network. We joined Transform to Net Zero. We are joined now, uh, obviously. Uh, and uh, 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 other uh, initiatives to build coalitions. And we also serve actually uh, supporting the UN Global Compact Climate Accelerator Program for a two years period. Uh, we've been making significant pro progress on, on this goal. Uh, for instance, Natura Latam has been avoiding 32% of emissions this year in 2020, and ESOP has reached carbon neutrality in Australia and New Zealand. We're now uh, still phasing actually um, and trying to measure uh, our emissions on scope one, two, and three. We have identified that uh, around 96% of emissions are uh, under scope three, which is a good news, knowing that we have really low intensive on production and manufacturing. We're working on that we are with our suppliers. And we also identify that most of that comes from packaging and from logistics. So that's going to be the two very big priorities for, for Nancy. The second one quickly, uh, the second commitment under the climate pillar is on deforestation. We're working on preserving the Amazon mostly. We're looking to expand the area of influence to 3 million hectares. Today we are at 1.8 million. We're also looking at expanding the influence on more communities locally to source the ingredients. And we are looking at also, uh, um, I mean, investing way more and uh, in communities in the Amazon and supporting them financially. Finally, we are also working to uh, um, source additional bio ingredients. So today we are sourcing 38 bio ingredients, mostly for the Natura Ecos range, which is very well known and very successful. And we are looking to increase that to 55 bio ingredients. Last but not least, the last commitment under this pillar is on enforcing the Nagoya Protocol. And we really uh, think that this is a must do and a priority for our action on climate. We are very much focused on biodiversity. And uh, ahead of COP26 and COP15, we are very committed to actually call for action and potentially uh, achieve an agreement on nature uh, on the model of the Paris Agreement on Climate as we think that that should also be a priority today. We obviously working with a number of partners like UEBT, the Science-Based Target Network and Business for Nature. And we also looking to actually expand that reach and work uh, with other corporates to, uh, to trigger more action and impact. 
I think that overall, that's the action we have on climate. I'm happy to respond to any question in the Q&A session uh, following the, the speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Noelia. Um, it, it's really uh, impressive to uh, hear that uh, Natura has been, you know, decarbonizing, measuring everything and decarbonizing for the last 20 years. And you guys have been actually a carbon neutral for the, um, you know, last, you know, since 2007. And also your efforts in the Amazon and protecting it while you're sourcing from it and also uh, gender uh, equality, that's what, you know, struck me as um, really some uh, very important initiatives among many, <laughs> uh, too, too, uh, too, uh, too many to uh, recount. So thank you so much. And now we're uh, moving on uh, to Catherine uh, from Expand Science US. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Catherine Dargon. I'm the general manager of um, Expansions for the US market. And um, so Expansions is a French laboratory uh, with many brands and I'll talk about our CSR commitment and then I'll refocus on Nustella, uh, the brand Nustella. Um, so CSR has been always part of our, it always been committed uh, in part of our commitment since um, to um, 204, which is almost 20 years ago. So it's really part of uh, the DNA and the, 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 the desire of uh, our president and CEO. So really everything started when we signed the United Nations uh, Global Compact in 2004 by Jean-Paul Bertomet. And since then, we really challenged to be uh, improving ourselves at every stage of our, our activity, including sourcing, composition of our product, um, equal designing of our um, uh, products and the manufacturing um, uh, using um, uh, in green energy. So I really want to focus on two things, um, which uh, is the B Corp certification in 2018. Uh, we were really proud to be um, certified B Corp, not only at the Mustela level, but in every brands that, that we have in every countries that we are in. So that was a big celebration for us. And then the, the, the other one is in 2020, uh, last December, uh, together with 500 other B Corps company, we committed to uh, be carbon neutral, like many of you. And, and this is by 2030, which is 20 years before the, the Paris Agreement, which we know is, is really uh, around the corner. So that means that you know, we need to transform and our sourcing and manufacturing processes to be um, functioning in a circular approach. So, We've been doing a lot of efforts uh, for 20 years, but we need to reinvent ourselves and be pushing the, the boundaries. So uh, I'll be talking about what, what it means for us and what our, um, our commitment uh, for the next few years. So Tony, you can change the, the slides. So Tony, next slide. Okay, so that's just... Um, to show that we were super proud to be at B Corp in uh, 2018, but you can uh, skip Tony. So our three major commitment is one, we want to be uh, commit to be zero waste. The second one is we want to commit to give back more than we take. And the third one is we commit to be on parent side. So next slide um, about the zero waste, what it means it, um, that we need to rethink our offer and use 100% of responsible packaging. So we. As a vision three R and C approach uh, to our packaging, which is refuse packaging, reuse packaging, recycle, and compost. When none of all, the first three is possible, then the last resort is really on the compost side. So next slide. Um, I'll just give you some example of what we, we are doing in that and the project we're working on. So in the refuse part, we really want to be um, um, building product that are multi-purpose. So we know it means uh, consume, consuming less for our consumers, but uh, this is the way we want to go. Uh, and this is an example of a, a tube that a product, multi-purpose product, avocado bomb that we're building with um, using an aluminum um, tube. And we are also working on a solid offer uh, that will um, we'll be using no packaging at all. The next one, they reuse. The first project is a bulk project. Um, that the French team has been working on uh, in the French pharmacies uh, in France. And we were the first one to um, be doing a bulk uh, offer in the French pharmacies. 
Uh, so we started with three uh, um, pharmacies and then we're gonna deploy the, the project in uh, um, more than 20 pharmacies uh, this year, just because of the success of, uh, that we've been having with um, the, um, the, 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 of this project. The, the second one is on the refill. Uh, we know refills are very important and we'll be um, launching a lot of refills program with our um, best sellers. And the third one being a, uh, instead of being a family brand, uh, we know that wipes are really um, a big uh, subject in the, for babies, to taking care of babies. So uh, we're going to be launching reusable wipes um, and encouraging uh, that new routine uh, for the mothers that are at home and then using the disposable wipes only when they are on the go. But that's a, it's a big um, issue and we, we need to address this um, very quickly. The next one in the recycle, we have a roadmap to offer packaging in recyclable material, whether it's plastic or any other materials or, um, and then that our, that product that we do are also recyclable. And the last one, when uh, the first three R are not possible, we need the, like the wipes, for example, we need to, we have a big project to um, have all our wipes um, being compostable. Um, going forward, meaning not only compostable in industrial compost, but in everyone's in, uh, personal compost. So as, as I said earlier, we committed to net zero by 2030. And what it means is, um, next slide, uh, we commit to take, uh, to give back more than we take. So it means that we need to reduce our impact and compensate for it. So. We are working with engineering firm to assess the life cycle of our uh, current and future catalog from sourcing to disposal of those products. And we need to make sure that we provide less negative impact and eventually produce a, a positive impact. And we also want to go beyond carbon uh, nat neutrality. And uh, we are assessing our major ingredient that, um, that um, we have on our product and we need to improve them and make sure they, they get the best label in terms of ethical sourcing, biodiversity, et cetera. And the last one, um, it's more on the social aspect, uh, but we know like raising uh, kids um, brings a lot of questions to parents. So we need to be on their side um, and accompany them to raise the LT generation uh, on the LT planet. So we want to include the parents in our decision-making process um, um, and, and co-create uh, really our product by uh, 2030. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, I just wanted to like uh, give again, like a, what stuck with me most, uh, what, what's been emerging now with our third speaker is that um, we're in the company of some uh, brands that have started working on this 15, 20 and some years ago before sustainability was a buzzword or a fashion or, you know, kind of buzzword of the moment. Um, so really, uh, and they, they've shown their really um, commitment by becoming part of bigger organizations like Global Compact. And um, again, carbon neutrality uh, is uh, one of the um, big uh, efforts on um, expand sciences uh, uh, agenda. And going beyond it, actually becoming like um, positive, net positive type of approach, giving back more, and um, also really uh, impressed by your packaging initiatives um, because you know <laughs> that's a major issue, uh, as we know, and I, it's being addressed in the last four or five years more than ever. So thank you, Catherine, and uh, now we're. Thank um, you. Um, moving on to Darcy no, uh, from uh, Dr. Bronner's. Thank you, Birner. And I am so excited to be here with you all today. As B Corps, we know that uh, we are stronger together. We signed the Declaration of Interdependence and we are committed to using business as a force for good in the world. And the B Corp Climate Collective which has hosted today's events and the last couple of days is, um, was born of collective action from certified B Corps who were working to address the climate crisis. And so it's really exciting that we are uh, today announcing the formation of a sub coalition 
Marie Charlotte will share more about that, um, to look specifically at cosmetics. And it's an honor to be on the panel with these other uh, wonderful brands and leaders. So thank you. Thanks for being here to listen and learn more about this coalition. And thanks for having me. I'm uh, Darcy Shiver Knowles. I'm with Dr. Bronner's. We are a 75 year old family owned, family run brand based in the US. We make soap. Um, this is our flagship product and other personal care products and um, food products. We have been a certified B Corp since 2015. We are also a registered benefit corporation in the state of California. And um, we've been a social enterprise since our founding uh, here in the US, but uh, making cosmetics as a family business since 1858 uh, with origins in Germany and through the guild system, for those of you calling in from Europe. So um, we're here today to talk about the climate crisis and how we as cosmetic brands can uh, collaborate to move the beauty industry forward together uh, to address the climate crisis and, and other um, issues of justice and sustainability in our world. So in terms of the climate, I want to share a few things with you all. Um, Dr. Bronner's is committed to being zero waste. We're not there yet. We're on the journey. We're looking at um, multiple projects to move away from and reduce our plastic usage. Um, and we are committed to climate positivity as a business uh, by 2025. So Tony, if you'll go to the next slide. We are planning to do that primarily through our ingredients. The vast majority, I think close to 80% of the ingredients that Dr. Bronner sources for our products are from our organic, certified organic and certified fair trade regenerative supply partner projects in the global south. And we've worked with these operations in long-term partnerships. That's one of the promises of fair trade. For many years, we've been certified fair trade since 2005. When we look at our carbon footprint, 60% of that footprint comes from our raw materials according to the, um, the metrics and emissions factors used by our industry. And so for us, our commitment to expanding and deepening and ensuring that these supply projects are farming using regenerative organic practices is going to be the primary way that we'll get to climate positive, where we're sequestering more carbon in the soil than we're emitting by our production and shipping processes. So um, next slide. We know from uh, Paul Hawken and Drawdown, as well as other uh, leaders and thought leaders in the world that, um, uh, well, Paul Hawkins says 10 out of the top 20 strategies to address climate include agriculture. So Dr. Bronner's was proud to partner with Patagonia, fellow B Corp and the Rodale Institute to launch the regenerative organic certification as B Corps, you will um, know the value of a certification, but we've been working to move our products, our supply chains toward this certification so that it can be on pack to let consumers know. Next slide. This is what some of those regenerative practices look like in our supply chain. So on the left, that's our um, mint field with conservation tillage. On the right, that's soil co coverage where uh, in Ghana, where we source our palm oil. Next slide. And um, you may say, okay, so what is a soap company doing launching chocolate or coconut oil? But for us, ingredients and our commitment to fair trade, our commitment to everyone through our supply chain and the planet as a whole guide us in who we are as a brand and why we make what we do. So both our coconut oil, which was the first regenerative organic certified food product in the world, um, and now chocolate are because of our dynamic agroforestry and regenerative organic practices for our cosmetic ingredients. So next slide. 
This is a dynamic agroforestry plot in Ghana where we source our palm oil. Palm is, as many of you must know as folks in the beauty industry, palm is a key ingredient and palm derivatives are key ingredients in many of our products. For Dr. Bronner's, it's the primary ingredient in our bar soap and we grow that palm in a dynamic agroforestry model intercropped with cacao, which is why we now have chocolate um, that we're thrilled to be launching this fall, um, intercropped with a number of other species. So I share this image because for us, the people in our supply chain are part of our commitment to our climate positive pathway. And collaboration with other brands like Patagonia and these brands here today, as we announced the beginning of the coalition, um, is so exciting and important to us because Dr. Bronner's is one brand, one company in the world. And even once we arrive at Climate Positive, which we don't fully know how we're gonna get there, but we've made that commitment and we know we must, that won't do it for the planet. We know we need to collaborate. And, um, I, I look forward to collaborating with all of you, sharing information, sharing best practices um, at, in a pre-competitive way. Uh, we heard from Davines co-opetition and um, that's really the spirit here. When we think about ingredients, when we think about packaging, we think about circularity more broadly and addressing the climate crisis. So uh, thank you again for having me. And um, uh, I think Marie Charlotte, you're up next and really excited um, for this for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy, for um, uh, talking um, about your brand. And I just, again, took some notes and, you know, and bringing uh, forward again, why we're here today. It's about the climate, you know, this conference is about the climate. And I don't know, but could the timing be even, uh, you know, chosen better because we're in the middle of the scorching heat wave in the Northeast. And uh, we know like the West Coast is burning up. So uh, unfortunately, I mean, um, so I, I'm not sure if the organizers had that, you know, the timing is just right again to remind us the importance of um, curbing the, of the carbon emissions um, and uh, unifying our efforts because it's gonna take all of us, um, um, you know. Uh, so thank you. And as, um, you know, Darcy said, we're now um, going over to Marie Charlotte She's gonna uh, talk us about um, the B Corp Beauty Coalition and how we can be part of it. They're announcing the Beauty Coalition. What? Thank you, Bjornor. So uh, first of all, thank you so much for all being here today and listening to us. Uh, so I'm Marie Charlotte Monteau. I'm, I'm working for Devines and, and I'm a Devines colleague. So. It is a common knowledge, obviously, that every actions or big decision are have a trigger. And the decision to create the coalition, obviously, is no different. You can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, over the year, many beauty companies uh, became B Corps to use business as a force for good uh, and increase their positive impact using the amazing tool that is a BIA. But what came soon after uh, was a growing awareness that some highly impactful improvement activities were actually nearly impossible, or let's say out of reach for uh, a single company. And this drove us to the very moment where you either decide to remain seated or you take actions. Obviously, as you can imagine, we decided the, to, you know, to take the second, uh, the second option. And uh, we started a very interesting conversation um, with a couple of uh, beauty B Corps. Um, and we realized that we were really all on the same page, facing the same troubles, having the same hope. And we decided it was time to focus on a collective effort that could bring change uh, to uh, the beauty industry by changing the rule of the game and bringing a systemic and durable change uh, to our industry. Um, so you can go to the next slide. So this uh, companies uh, that actually started this initial conversation are actually now the seven founders of the B Corp Beauty Coalition uh, that you can now see uh, on your screen. Uh, so we have Devines, uh, we have Dr. Bronner's, Expansions, Herbatine, Natural is Better, Scandinavisk, and Rudolf Care. 
And uh, I'm also excited to share with you all that we started, um, we opened, let's say, uh, in, a, in a very broad uh, way, uh, the um, recruitment process um, just in June. And we have now uh, nine other companies that actually committed to join the coalition. Uh, so we are growing and we're growing fast and we are really happy about that. And uh, so all these uh, companies are uh, committing to work all together to realize, obviously, uh, the um, coalition purpose that uh, we can discover at the next slide. Um, so obviously, we are all aware uh, of our interdependence. We are B Corps. And so we decided to join, as I was saying before, forces to improve the sustainability standards of the beauty industry. And we are aiming to do that uh, through uh, a couple of very simple objectives that are uh, to encourage collaboration and exchange between beauty companies, identify and share good practices and improvement actions specific to the beauty industry as Darcy was uh, anticipating, influence the beauty industry to trigger sustainable changes, and finally work all together on higher level goals identified by the coalition. Uh, but as you can imagine, building a coalition is a constant learning process. Uh, it's the first time for us, uh, for us also. And uh, in the initial phase, it was really important for us to get in touch with um, people that could inspire us, that could give us uh, advices, or uh, check out uh, a couple of uh, benchmark and best practices. And in particular, I'm really, really grateful to Kim Kapanis that uh, was so helpful in the uh, initial process that put us in touch with us amazing people um, and uh, sh shared with us her um, obviously very broad knowledge. Um, something also interesting to obviously uh, to state is the fact that um, one big benchmark, let's say for us, is the sustainable apparel coalition, and this obviously in terms of impact and uh, also um, structure. Um, so you can go to the next slide. Thank you, Tony. So up to date, uh, what uh, what what is the work to date? So. The coalition is still at a very early stage, st stage, but I think this is really an opportunity for the people that uh, are still thinking about uh, joining the coalition, because uh, I think it gives you the perfect opportunity to join the coalition and really participate in building it. So uh, until now, no, let's say, final decision uh, on very important, let's say, um, uh, matter have been taken. You can go to the next slide. Okay, up to date, what did we do? So obviously, first of all, we really uh, focus on the organizational aspect because if you want to build a group of people, obviously you need to you know, do a bit of uh, cleaning uh, at the beginning just to make sure that everything works out. We established together uh, the criteria for membership because obviously uh, it is important uh, from start to, to all agree on that. And if you go come to the next slide, we can really briefly touch on that. So we all agree on the fact that it was important that the members, the, the members, the companies joining us uh, will be a certified B Corps. Um, that obviously they will be uh, beauty companies or uh, be a part of the supply chain of the beauty industry. And overall that uh, they will be willing to cooperate and exchange information at a pre-competitive level. And finally, being willing to change the industry. Next slide, thank you. Um, afterwards, something also very important that we already discussed in the coalition and that can present to you today um, are the priority topic that we identified to work on uh, for uh, the next month and I will say even the next year, because the next years because they are so broad that it's going to take a long time. If you, go, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. So until now, we identified four main topics. Obviously, uh, the list is... Um, um, updated to today, and, and if a new members enter the coalition and they are willing to take lead on a different topic, and, and we are obviously happy to open another working group. So until now, we have obviously packaging, so the performance and the sustainability of the packaging, ingredient supply chain uh, to build a fair and sustainable um, to, be, to build fair and sustainable sourcing practices, the logistic. Uh, and uh, finally, um, a very interesting one also, which is the B-Beauty positioning and promotion. So really to challenge the empty industry trends and promises. Um, and finally, let's say what could sound more boring, but is absolutely, absolutely essential to a coalition, which is the governance. 
Uh, so we have been working with uh, the found with other founders in on drafting a governance framework to guide the coalition in its um, decision. But uh, important to state the fact that everything will be uh, submitted to uh, voting at our first member uh, members assembly that will take place in September. So obviously, new members that will arrive from now to September will have the opportunity to um, uh, share their thoughts on the, what we define. Finally, now we, that we explain all, everything about the coalition, how can you join the coalition? So actually it's very, very simple. If you're interested in joining the coalition, it's just a matter of click, clicking on this link and um, you will be presented with uh, a very nice introduction letter that is really explaining uh, all the thing that I said today, but maybe in an even more detailed way and give you the opportunity to fill in uh, a questionnaire uh, where uh, you are um, going to, in fact, commit officially to become a member or simply just um, uh, take a couple of information about the coalition. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Marie Charlotte. Uh, I know, um, you know, we're, we might be running a little um, behind in our schedule. I'm not sure if we have a hard stop, but I'm assuming we're continuing. So, um, and I really loved, uh, you know, how uh, in your coalition, you're like first attacking the packaging or one of the top priorities is packaging because, you know, do not do no harm, right? So we, we don't want to create products that are going to generate, you know, waste um, when we're solving consumers' problems and uh, and laying it all out, what the coalition is all about and how you can join. So it's really, really exciting. And I know we're going to take some questions if we have time from the audience, but I had a few that I have for our panelists. I'm going to go ahead with them. And so actually, Darcy, uh, my uh, first question is for you. Um, natural and organic doesn't always mean sustainable. How can beauty brands get started sourcing regenerative ingredients, if you might, you know, add, uh, give us some highlights? Sure. Well, I think this goes back to um, the conversation that we had uh, yesterday in the uh, North American regional breakout around where do you start? And um, it, it depends where you are on your climate journey. But uh, for, for companies interested in tackling sourcing, um, I would encourage you to start with your materiality. What, where is your biggest carbon impact? And then um, how can you source that material regeneratively? There, um, there are not very many certified regenerative organic products, uh, raw materials available yet. This is an emergent um, certification scheme, but uh, USDA organic and certified fair trade is a great place to start. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to be a resource if folks are interested in, in tree crops, uh, coconut oil, palm oil in particular. Um, and I see this Be Beauty Coalition as a space where brands can share information about supply chain needs and um, collaborate pre-competitively. Hey, we're looking for um, sustainable palm oil. What, what, what's the difference between RSPO and fair trade? Let's talk, let's talk this through. And how can we source from Syringa Palm where you get your regenerative organic palm oil? Those are the kinds of conversations that I hope we'll be able to have in this coalition. So, um, you know, it's, that's a, the short answer is it depends. Um, and I hope, um, I invite you to lean into this coalition as a place to start. Thank you so much, Darcy. You know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a big world and, you know, there's so many materials and so many supply chains and, you know, joining forces makes total sense um, in, in, in terms of ingredient sourcing as well and sharing best practices. So um, I have a question for Catherine as well. Um, Catherine, you're representing a global company with a presence in more than 100 countries. Uh, industry standards have evolved so much uh, since the inception of the company more than 70 years ago. And we know that, you know, uh, it, it, you know we have to come, uh, you know, over in external hurdles sometimes to make sustainable products. But there are also internal hurdles like uh, getting the uh, top management or the C-suit on board. So can you, can you tell us a little bit about how you 
uh, got uh, your executive team, um, you know, accept some of these, uh, uh, you know, sustainability, make it a, a top priority? Yeah, thank you. It's a, it's a good question. And, and I, I've worked for many companies in my life, and that's um, totally a challenge for um, most of, of the companies. But um, just my exp my personal experience with, with Expansos, it's, it's been quite easy, actually, because it, it's coming from the top. So it's coming from um, our CEO and president is the it's a family business. So he owns the, the full company. And he, it's coming from him. It's coming from from his desire um, that he, 20 years ago that he decided that it was important for expansion. So, so it's not only something that we do because it's it's trendy and it's coming from marketing team to just um, they see the trends and they want to communicate on this. It's coming from um, the core and the DNA of, of, our, of our company. So the, from the people that you hire to the supplier that you work with, um, from the, the bonus, it's CSR, uh, we have CSR criteria in our bonus system. So it's part of the, the whole ecosystem of our company. Um, so it's not really difficult to convince because it's coming from, from the top. And I think that's, the, that, that's the, 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 the beauty of working for an independent company that we don't need to report anything to Wall Street. It's um, family business or maybe a little bit easier. We don't have deep pocket, maybe like the biggest comparison, uh, but at the same time, we're a little bit more maybe agile to to test and learn and, and to do packaging uh, trial to do uh, the bulk projects and, and, and we're going to try and, and adapt along the way, like um, David Davines was saying at the beginning. Um, so we, we try and try to improve all the time and and because I don't think anybody has, has any uh, know the key success and how to achieve this, but um, by working together with um, coalition and other brands and being flexible and agile, I think that's how we're gonna we're gonna get there. Thank you. I mean, it's it's truly admir admirable. You've mentioned something like we don't report to the Wall Street. Uh, yes, you're not worried about you know the bottom line as much, but even now Wall Street is, I guess, paying attention a little bit to sustainability and. You know, a lot of family-owned businesses here. It's admirable that you guys are doing it. Um, you know, uh, basically, you you know, the owners believe in this, and it's coming from top down. Um, that's that's really uh, amazing. And um, so, my next question, you know, was in the area about like we know that every company and brand they have somewhat you know different sustainability strategy. You know, for their, especially when they're first starting out. Um, and, um, and some companies, uh, you know, have rightfully chosen to align their goals with UN sustainable development goals. So, um, this one, I'm going to, um, ask Noelia, what, what advice can you give beauty brands who would like to incorporate SDGs into their, uh, ESG strategy? I think it's a, it's a really Good question because we have the experience of a, I would say, a big machine uh, that has several uh, arms in the several companies we have in the group. And I would say that I would say the lessons learned are mainly that, firstly, you need a real commitment from the entire organization, bottom down and top to bottom. I would say that this is really a must uh, must to have. Then you also need to create, uh, I would say, a lean structure that would uh, enable you to um, manage, firstly, manage the, firstly, measure, secondly, uh, set goals, then manage the implementation of the goals and measure them. And then we all know that uh, the big corp certification is a, it's a big work, uh, I would say, uh, for, for, for the teams. Uh, then I would say that some of the targets do not need necessarily to be quantitative all the time. They also can be qualitative more than quantitative. I think this is a good advice for those that are really looking into having like numbers, numbers, numbers. Uh, obviously investments, and this is obviously uh, needs to be driven by, by board decisions and by, by the C-suite and, and the CEO and, and be completely backed, I would say. Um, and then uh, seek 
help uh, and and i think that my colleagues here are, are really like a good sources of information and 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 able to actually support uh, other corporates uh, to to take action and also prioritize and i would say that pick a battle uh, let's say uh, if you really want to start somewhere uh, look at what you're doing look at what where you're good at and and pick that battle first and then when you tackle one battle you can start the next one I would say that that would be my main 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 uh, advice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, thank you so much, uh, Noelia. I mean, yes, there are. I mean, SDGs are one way of looking at it, but they're what 17, 18, and there are some yeah. overlapping. And you know, it's really it depends on you know what your impacts are, what, what what's material to your business sure. and uh, your operations. And uh, but you know, overall, what I'm seeing is emerging is really carbon emissions. I think that's kind of like you know to curb curb this you know heating of our, our globe. That's probably one of the top top priorities, and everything kind of falls behind it. Yeah. Not to ignore anything, but that's just almost like a great starting point, and maybe you know incorporating um, some of these SDGs um, along the way. And I've heard a very good sentence this morning at another event saying, don't really necessarily focus on net zero, but focus on the way to get there and on actually reducing an emission. I think that's good yeah. enough. Thank you. Yes. I mean, we're not going to be able to turn off all our energy needs at <laughs> one point. Even, even so, even if you did that, it will take decades for the for the atmosphere, atmospheric CO2 to come to the levels, the pre-industrial level. So it's not like a knob that we can turn off. It, it's, you know, it's, it's building and, and really targeting, you know, the 2030 goals, the 2050 goals, so that by the end of this century, our kids, our grandkids, um, you know, are not going to be faced with a, you know, a 670 uh, centigrade increase um, that some models are predicting anyway. Um, so no, no, nothing dooms, you know, doomsday type of conversation here. It's all about, you know, energizing each other. And I'm really, really excited that I got a chance to do that with all of you today. And I know, um, we have, uh, let's see, I, I was going to see if we have any questions from the audience that hasn't been answered. Uh, I think it's has been mostly about, um, you know, how to join the coalition, Etc. That those are the kind of nature of questions. If I'm not wrong, and uh, I know we can, you know, have give um, Mary Charlotte one more uh, uh, chance to to really say it. But I learned from this group first. You need to be a, a B Corp to start with. So there's no like you need to really do the, your due diligence. But um, now, um, Marie, if you want to um, add on to it, exactly like one as closing uh, message to the to our audience, what did they need to do to be part of this? Thank you. I would simply, uh, you know, say if you're willing to join a, you know, a coalition that is trying to, you know, strive for changes and, um, um, yeah, change the industry from the inside, um, really, please um, join us. And it, it is very easy, just uh, Darcy shared a couple of links. One is the link to uh, the introduction letter. Another one is directly um, uh, bringing you to the survey to fill in uh, to uh, actually um, join the coalition. And if you have like specific question also feel free to again, uh, fill in the questionnaire and just ask for um, a complimentary information about the coalition. We'll be very happy to furnish them to you. Okay, um, actually, um, I just remembered that I skipped over one of the questions that I had. So if we have time, I would like to I would like to ask this to David uh, uh, if if I can uh, ask for a few more minutes of your time. David, um, circular economy is seems like the holy grail for our uh, um, sustainability in this industry. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how the Venus is going on the circular, you know, doing on the circularity front? This year we are focusing on uh, plastic. Uh, we, we calculate our plastic leakage. Uh, that is uh, um, the amount of plastic that we, we consider on our geographical uh, footprint uh, that uh, cannot be, uh, cannot go in proper recycling or improper 
end of uh, waste uh, um, uh, practices. And uh, we, have, uh, uh, we, we have neutralized this. And uh, actually, we, we, uh, we, we are, um, the, the calculation is around 20, 20 tons of plastic leakage. So this year, we are uh, taking out of uh, uh, the environment 100 tons of plastic hand by hand uh, through plastic bank. So we make sure that because you do it five times, that uh, you know, by taking out 100 tons of plastic from the environment, we contribute to uh, award um, with uh, uh, less plastic uh, in in an improper end of waste. So that is, a, I think, it's a very concrete and simple um, initiative that shows uh, circularity among uh, all, all the rest that is uh, reduced. You know, all the all the airs airs that we know. Thank you, Davida. Wouldn't that be uh, amazing if, you know, somebody's waste was really somebody's uh, treasure and we could all, you know, uh, work in, uh, in the corporation uh, um, to reduce uh, our impacts uh, for the world. So um, I'm really here. I think we're uh, really out of time, unfortunately, for today. And I would uh, like to uh, give a virtual uh, round of applause to all our um, panelists. Thank you for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, reach to uh, the coalition. And you know, after this, go and sign up for the uh, coalition. And I'd like to take to thank uh, Tony for uh, putting this together and, and organizing and bringing all of us together for this um, for this talk. Thank you to the organizers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye.